So, this is the second leg of my journey from uh, Vladivostok. First was to Moscow and second is this. Good morning everyone. It is day 3 here in Moscow. My last day in here. Tonight at 11 o'clock I will be leaving to Kazan via a train. So... Today we are gonna go explore the Kremlin which was closed yesterday. We are again near the uh, Alexander the Great monument. We are gonna go and buy tickets for it, for the Kremlin. And we are gonna go see the armory I guess. So we are walking past the Kutafia Tower, the tower which you see on the top. It leads all the way to the entrance so that is called as the Kutafia Tower. Also these gates, yesterday when I showed them to my dad, and even when I myself uh, saw it for the first time, I kind of it kind of resembled Virapandya Katabuman's gate, the Virapandya Katabuman Palace in Etayapuram. Uh, if you people have go, uh, been there, you might know these people are the ones. Uh, these soldiers are the ones who guard the fallen soldiers' memorial. I guess they are going right there to take their shift. Also, this area which is around me near the Kulfia, Kutafia's tower is called as the Alexandrovsky Sad, which literally means Alexander's Garden because there is an Alexander the Great monument in here and there is a garden around here and it is dedicated to him. And behind me, there is a ticketing office. So, we are going there to get the tickets to enter the Kremlin. So, I got the tickets to enter the Kremlin Square. I'm not going into the armory chamber because I think. 700 rubles even with the student's card is uh, expensive so let me get inside the Kremlin and just see through in there also most of the things which I wanted to see are closed on itself like the uh, Ivan's bell I guess bell tower uh, and some of the cathedrals inside are closed so getting just the tickets for the armory is waste for wasteful for 700 rubles so I just got to enter the Kremlin square The cost of Moscow doesn't kill me first, then the sun might. It's 38 degrees in here today. It's scorching hot. Like, I literally want to go and stand inside the fountain that I found down. to the first place to see. First one it's a Tsar cannon. Uh, you can see the size though. So this right here is the Assumptions Cathedral. The paintings on it are fantastic, like it brings out something new to the cathedral, something unique. Okay, the one right beside me now, right behind me now is the Ivan the Great Bell Tower which has the Assumption Beferi and the Exhibition Hall. We are not going inside unfortunately because it is closed. It has a lot of bills. I think I read it has about 14 bills. I leave the corrections below. Okay, so behind me now is the Archangel's Cathedral. We actually came from the Patriarch's Arch. That's how we entered in. Besides that is the Tsar's Bell. So this one is the Ivan the Great Belta. And on this side we have the Assumptions Cathedral. Behind us is Archangel's Cathedral. The next one up there is the Anunian Cathedral. I'm not able to remember all the cathedrals name. These are all different to me. So I got the map. 
Also, this place is called as the Cathedral Square. So behind me is the Tsar's Bell. Uh, it is one of the biggest uh, in Europe, but it was never installed. Also behind there you can see the Sparskaya, Sparskaya Tower, which is actually nothing but the clock tower which we saw during our visit to the Red Square yesterday. Also, Kremlin is not really the word which we all believe uh, it is. It is not the place where uh, the uh, presidential happenings happen in Russia. No, it is not where the administrative things happen. No, nothing like that. Kremlin is actually a uh, fort. Uh, that's the meaning of it. Uh, so anything that is a fort in here, even in Vladivostok we have one. Uh, Moscow has uh, like 10 more of these. So Kremlin doesn't actually mean anything but fort. Anything that is fortified with walls around it is called as Kremlin. So this one is called Kremlin because it is also it also has four walls. Uh, because of its historical nature, uh, this one is more, more famous than everything else. So this is the second leg of my journey from uh, Vladivostok. First was to Moscow and second is this. Uh, I'm near uh, Leningradsky and Yaroslavsky uh, railway station and behind me there is a Hilton Hotel and to the other side is Kazansky Vokzal uh, in Moscow. Uh, every single railway station is named after the places from uh, to which the trains go from that station. So Leningradsky and uh, Yaroslavsky means the train uh, trains are going there. Kazansky meaning the train is going to Kazan. So the second journey is, of course, you might have guessed it by now, is a Trans-Siberian adventure towards Vladivostok from uh, Moscow. First is going to be Kazan. So uh, from where I came, I came from Kitai Gore. From there, I came to Kosmomolskaya, uh, where I had come during the metro tour. Uh, but I got out through the long exit in the metro. I know, metro always confuses me with these exits, especially in Moscow, when each metro station has over 11 to 12 exits for each side. That right there is our train. We still haven't gotten the uh, platform number yet because it is just 8 o'clock in here and the train is by 11. So I'm gonna take a seat, browse the web for some time and then go inside the platform when the platform number comes out. So it is about 9.15 in here. We still haven't gotten our platform number but I am bored so I'm gonna go inside and see what's up. Not in a way, <laughs> not an authoritative way but in a way of going inside and seeing how the trains are. these engines in the back they look fairly similar to the diesel engines that we have in India but this one looks a bit different but I haven't been in a Indian uh, Indian railways in a really long time so this might have been a change in the recent times but that I haven't seen also for people uh, who are planning to travel in the Trans-Siberian or anywhere in Russia 
uh, especially in Moscow. I don't know about other stations. I'll uh, tell you from there. But Moscow has announcements even in English. So that's a plus if you are someone who uh, don't know Russian and you are gonna travel in the trains of Russia. At last, I got the platform number. You can see right there. It's in the second platform. My room already has people in it, so I can't record inside. Okay, the train just started. The train is kind of too compact. I have traveled in Indian trains. I have traveled in all compartments of the train, all classes. But this train is really compact. Like, I am really short for uh, even in Indian, I am like average height. But this train, train the upper berth is like really short. I can't even sit with my back a bit bent. It's that short. Now it's time to get refreshed and go sleep. So when you enter the cabin, there are two upper berths and two lower berths for this train configuration. For this double ducker configuration, you have a study lamp, a place to store uh, your necessities for the night. Uh, I don't know what is this for. You also have a couple of hangers in there, uh, some shirt hooks, another hook in there that you have for both sides. And everybody has these two too. Also, there are charging ports, one in there and one in there, but I heard that not all trains have them. Getting to upper berth, you just need to lift the lock and pull the stairs down. So you have three stairs and a handle up top to climb in. Also, this cabin can be closed. And you have a mirror in there. And you are provided with a, a pillow, a sheet, and a blanket the blue one is a blanket so that's it okay so we are about 30 ish minutes in, uh, to kazan and we just crossed the last station like uh, half an hour ago so i changed my dress I arranged everything in my bag and we are ready to go and explore Kazan. 
this train journey was pretty uh, comfortable to be here, uh, to be honest with you I, uh, i woke up in the morning at 4 uh, 4 am and i was looking out through the window outside the cabinet because everybody inside the cabinet was sleeping and the window shades were down i couldn't see outside uh, the only complaint i would have is that the only complaint which i would have is that the birds are really small even the lower birds are really small that uh, a person with a person who is tall would not be able to stretch his legs and sleep especially uh, in this type of uh, arrangement uh, i don't know if uh, the next upcoming trains are going to be worse i I, re- i really hope it is not but i know for a fact that it is going to be worse after this because this is the most posh train that i booked uh this is a double decker this is a new coach there are charging ports everywhere the other trains are pretty old uh so th- uh, that's going to be another uh, adventure <laughs> that's going to be another uh, pretty great adventure i guess uh, let's see